Yeah. Started. I saw reports out there that I feel like we're attacking, you know, my character and how I'm the person, not even getting into a player standpoint of it. Um, there was no talk of me being a backup quarterback this week in terms of being a two. Um, if I was healthy enough to play and the trainers and coaches felt like I looked good enough to play, I was going to start and play. Um, if they believed that I was not, which they believed I was not, I was not going to dress and suit up for the game. Um, so whoever reported that, I don't know where it started. Um, it's kind of crazy what people were writing, put out there um, to try to you know, prove their point or help their standpoint or their careers and, and what you guys do. Um, but, you know, disappointing to see that uh, without any proof or basis of it. So this week I'm now the two. They feel good four weeks out of the surgery uh, for me to dress and do the two. So I will be the two and do what I have to do to be ready to go to Baltimore. So if there's any other questions about that, um, I feel like I answered it pretty good there. Is there anything else? Is there any Baltimore questions? I'll get on the Baltimore. First of all, I'm super grateful to be here. Um, obviously, uh, to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, it's great tradition uh, to be able to compete and to be able to go go to work with these guys every single day is the gift of this game, uh, enjoying the process of it all. And, uh, and the reason why I wanted to come here because I wanted to be able to win championships, Coach Tomlin and these guys in the locker room. And I saw reports out there that I feel like we're attacking you know, my character and how I'm the person, not even getting into a player standpoint of it. Um, there was no talk of me being a backup quarterback this week in terms of being a two. Um, if I was healthy enough to play and the trainers and coaches felt like I looked good enough to play, I was going to start and play. Um, if they believed that I was not, which they believed I was not, I was not going to dress and suit up for the game. Um, so whoever reported that, I don't know where it started. Um, it's kind of crazy what people were writing, put out there um, to try to, you know, prove their point or help their standpoint or their careers and, and what you guys do. Um, but, you know, disappointing to see that uh, without any proof or basis of it. So this week I'm now the two. They feel good four weeks out of the surgery uh, for me to dress and be the two. So I will be the two and do what I have to do to be ready to go to Baltimore. So if there's any other questions about that, um, I feel like I answered it pretty good there. Is there anything else? Is there any Baltimore questions? I'll get on the Baltimore. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm super grateful to be here. Um, obviously, uh, to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, it's great tradition uh, to be able to compete and to be able to go to go to work with these guys every single day is the gift of this game, uh, enjoying the process of it all. And, uh, and the reason why I wanted to come here because I want to be able to win championships, Coach Tomlin and these guys in the locker room. And... And my, oh my, have the, have things changed uh, since uh, the finale of the 2023 campaign for the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers right there, uh, which had high hopes uh, for Kenny Pickett. Uh, the Steelers won the uh, put behind with a, a brand new offense coordinator, which be uh, Kenny Pickett's uh, third offense coordinator uh, as a member of the Black and Gold uh, and, ho and hopes to sign, re-sign Mace Rudolph. Now, remember, uh, Kenny Pickett, who actually got uh, hurt uh, during the end of the season right there, uh, who actually uh, was dealing with a high ankle sprain right there, and uh, accusations being uh, flowed around him uh, that he was refusing to uh, dress behind uh, Mason Rudolph as an emergency uh, backup uh, behind not just Seattle, but then going into the final game of the Ravens, which he vehemently denied. Uh, but at the end of the day, too, I mean, just more importantly, the Steelers were ready to invest with him. Uh, Given another go around, uh, Jerry Dulac did report that the Steelers were not interested in bringing in an outside uh, veteran quarterback. And one of those guys was included uh, was uh, Russell Wilson, which was mentioned at the time, but it seemed like it changed a little bit later on. Once Broncos did release uh, Russell Wilson. Good evening, everybody. Once again, I'm Charles Project Richie here, host of the Mount Steel uh, podcast. We're recapping this year's uh, free agency uh, period that's just been off to a booming start right now. Uh, as the, as things got triggered off uh, last Sunday on uh, March uh, 10th, that Russell Wilson he would be signing a one year deal at the vet minimum of $1.2 million. Now, the Broncos uh, were going to pay, uh, wind up paying like uh, $39 million of his salary, but minus whatever his, he would be signing with his new team. So in that case, it turned out to be $37.8. Uh, now, 
a uh, day or two later, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk did uh, report that the Broncos have designated the move as a post-June 1st release and where they'll spread the $85 million dead cap by absorbing $53 million this year and $32 million uh, in 2025, rather than 35.4 this year and 49.6 in 2025. Uh, at the end of the day, you, mean, you look at a guy like uh, Russell Wilson who uh, came over there uh, to the Broncos right there. I mean, look at all the draft picks. I mean, the, the Broncos uh, sell for, her, I mean, who was uh, dealt by the Wilson, who was dealt by the Seahawks to the Broncos with a fourth round pick in exchange for quarterback Drew Locke. Uh, tight end Noah Font and defensive tackle Shelby Harris, while the Broncos set two first, two seconds, and a fifth round pick. And don't forget, though, too, prior to the start of the 2022 season, Labor Day weekend, he signed a five year extension worth up to $243 million with 160 guaranteed. Uh, now, things, I mean, when you look back at uh, Russell Wilson's uh, time right there. I mean, look at his numbers right there. Uh, what he did uh, with uh, Nathaniel Hackett went four and eleven right there. Uh, Sixteen touchdowns, eleven receptions. Uh, his passing yards were still respectable, but I mean, it was still slowly starting to take a slow dip after his 2020 uh, season. I mean, look at like what he was doing there. And at the end of the day, too, I mean, a lot of stuff that was being thrown at him, like how he had access to his own uh, training facility, his own uh, film uh, study session, his own massages, the way he was kind of distancing, distancing himself from his teammates right there. Now, Wilson did want to like, uh, stay on with the Broncos. I mean, despite him and the rocky relationship they had with Sean Payton, Sean Payton, who was not pleased uh, to be uh, paired with Wilson after he heard all the stuff, what went on from the year before, uh, pretty much uh, attacked uh, Nathaniel Hackett and uh, his staff uh, for how things turned out, Point uh, broke a coach's code right there. And you look at it right there, the Broncos just missed out on making uh, the playoffs. He was benched for uh, the foul uh, two games, I believe, of the regular season right there. And where the Broncos uh, did miss out on uh, making the playoffs, they went to eight and nine after going uh, five and twelve the previous season. I mean, they've that was the first time they had like a uh, a single like where their losses were down the single digits since twenty nineteen. But uh, yet so far, I mean, the Broncos uh, since the retirement of Peyton Manning, they only had one winning season. Or they went nine and seven, did not make the playoffs, and uh, they can't continue that right there. And uh, you just look at the rocky relationship, the growing pains. I mean, Sean Payton did try to squeeze enough out of him, but I mean, it was that game against the Lions right there, where he saw him got like stressed, like pretty much on uh, TV right there, just shouting at him, filling the blanks, the expletives that are being thrown at him. You know, so he he did. Uh, get benched for the final two games of the season, and uh, where they went to their uh, back uh, quarterback, the Broncos did, and uh, Jarrett Stidham right there, who went one and one right there, uh, beating the Chargers and losing to the Raiders in the season uh, finale right there. But here he is well, with Pittsburgh right here. I mean, you look at it. And uh, here he is right now. And unfortunately for a guy like Kenny Pickett, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, the guy who they thought that he was going to be uh, there in the beginning, you know, from University of Pitt, who played five seasons there, who had an incredible run with the touchdown uh, passes and stuff right there. I mean, Pickett, I mean, who had a real good college career at Pitt, uh, really – I mean, just a couple years ago, don't forget, at the following retirement of uh, Ben Rosberger, Mike Tomlin immediately went to the fact that, you know what, they wanted to follow, you know, like getting a mobile quarterback, how important that aspect it is in today's game, especially playing at that position, the way the game has evolved. And, I mean, one of the guys that was definitely on their radar right there in free agency, they uh, paid attention to a guy like Mitch – Trubisky, former Chicago Bear right there, who did not work out after 
three seasons in uh, Chicago. I mean, uh, four seasons in Chicago, three seasons in Chicago, excuse me. Uh, he did wind up being a backup to Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills in 2021 under Brian uh, Dable on Sean McDermott's uh, coaching staff right there. Uh, felt like he picked up uh, some pretty good uh, pointers right there to get him in the direction once again, but it did not pan out. Um, you saw what happened, the disaster uh, that was. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Mitch Stoke could like, uh, move around with his legs, do some stuff. But, I mean, as a passer, it just does not seem it was up to par at this league right here. So the Steelers did have a choice going into that year's draft. Uh, and it was uh, right there. A lot of people were speculating. They're going to be drafting the quarterback. Who would that be? Would that be Kenny Pickett out of Pitt? I mean, the... Uh, I mean the guy who played who shares the same stadium as the Steelers. I mean, right there, or were they look at a guy like Malik Willis? Well, at the twentieth overall pick, they did uh, select Kenny Pickett. He did not get drafted by any other team. He would happen to be available. The Steelers did end up uh, grabbing him. And what ended up happening with Kenny Pickett right here? I mean, a guy who supposedly broke Dan Marino's like a uh, passion records with the touchdowns, uh, basically at Pitt. I mean, overall, I mean, he's had winning records each of the seasons as a member of the Black and Gold. The only problem was, too, he just could not stay healthy enough. And you look at it a lot of times, too, I mean, like, uh, just touchdown their interception ratio. Seven touchdowns and nine interceptions uh, his first year. Six touchdowns and four interceptions this past year. So he had one less touchdown uh, this, this year than he did the year before. And it's just, but you look at it, though, too. I mean, yes, he had a lot of sloppy quarterback play, but I really felt like this guy was a winner who actually compiled up six uh, fourth-quarter comebacks, some game-winning drives. Yeah, I know I'm I'm making, I'm boiling it up a little bit right there, but, I mean, still, I really thought this guy had winning intangibles. And versus a guy like Justin Fields, I, would, I went to bat and opened my mouth and argued that, I felt he was still a better passer than Justin Fields was. I s s still uh, believe that to some degree, though, right there. I mean, unfortunately, we did not get to see it uh, come to fruition how he would do work with uh, a guy like Matt Canada, young old uh, Mike Sullivan, and Faulkner. I mean, still, I mean, that was just uh, this in-house uh, running. I mean, I mean, when you look at like uh, one of the Closest point losses, uh, which happened to come in Cleveland, by the way, uh, back on uh, November 20th, I want to say it was. I, I want to say they lost to the Browns in Cleveland right there, 13 to 10. And that was just a loss right there where it's they, they could have really start uh, getting some separation right there uh, versus Browns. It was November 19th, ex excuse me. But uh, anyway, I mean, look at right there. I mean, the Steelers, who just had like a nice little wave right there. They're on a nice two-game winning streak. They're kind of surging a little bit. Uh, they would go on beat the Bengals. Uh, but in between that part, Mike, I mean, Matt Cannon finally did get fired after that Browns loss. I mean, just having to deal with a season of fire Canada right there for all the fans right there. And it was just, you know what? I mean, they normally didn't fire coaches like during the season, but it was something that they haven't done in like eons. And for Mike Tomlin to finally do that, I really thought it was going to be to a point that, you know, the criticism of a guy like Matt Canada, it was just be numb to the point where it's like, hearing the chance of fire Canada, it was just going to be like, you know what? <laughs> you may as well just say, fire away Canada. Maybe it was going to be some sort of rallying cry. Who knew? But here we are right now. I mean, can you pick it? I mean, at the same time, too. I mean, when you, when you look at his career, definitely a lot of disappointments, not staying enough healthy. Uh, definitely, I got to admit, found him pretty pouty to be at times, too. I mean, a guy who felt like he was trying to be a leader, and I can relate to that. I've never been one, but I mean, at the same time, I know what it's like when you feel like you're trying to say the right things, but it comes off funny. And you got to be careful where you're not throwing your teammates under the bus in any way. I, I really do feel like there was times he spoke out of turn 
a little bit. I mean, and you look at the people who was around him too, like me inside that locker room, more was guys like Chase Claypool. I mean, I mean, getting upset, Deontay Johnson. I mean, I mean, those guys right there. I mean, even George Pickens, I think, was just getting like a little like uh frustrated though too with his uh, utilization this past year. He was lucky he did not uh get traded, released, or whatever following this season. They know how special he is. I mean, what he continued to do uh, for being the next star receiver uh, for this uh, group. But, I mean, you look at it right there. I mean, is there something to be said? I mean, yes, not just Matt Canada's, uh play calling, but Kenny Pickett's execution. I mean, not just Kenny Pickett. You could also throw in there Mitch Trubisky. I mean, this, I mean, it was just a frustrating time. You could even look back as far as, I mean, like, when Bill Cowher, too, went to bat for him, when they had that ugly loss to Philadelphia. I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves. Let's just stop kidding ourselves. They haven't won there in the 60s in, in Philadelphia. But the way he was getting knocked around in that game, I mean, Bill Cowher was even saying, too, you know what, you need to kind of, like, uh, start taking some less pressure of him and, like, you know, because – he kind of felt like they're asking too much of him. So, I mean, he, you know, hit Bill Cowher, though. He's still going to be a guy who still loves the philosophy of running the ball. But, I mean, it's just like the, you know, the the attitude of, like, you know, trying to play with a chip on your shoulder. I mean, he wants players across that line, but not to go over the line to an extent. He wants to make it personal, you know, where he can fire them up, uh, play smart. Uh, hit fast, hit hard, but have fun doing it, that type of attitude. And I can respect that. But, I mean, at the same time, Pickett, as much as he was a winner in his record, I'm not going to lie, it has been a, a, a hellacious, tenuous run the last two seasons in particular. And you look at where the Steelers are at right now under Mike Tomlin, having not won a playoff game. I mean, you look at like how their season ended once again. I mean, a playoff loss, I mean, to the Buffalo Bills, team that's still aver averaging uh, 40 points allowed on defense. You can't have that anymore. But, I mean, more particularly, I mean, you just could not go a quarterback, I mean, like with – that's going to be a game manager. But, yeah, alone, I mean, one of the biggest things, too, that just stood out when I was watching that game in person, I was at that playoff game, ball security. So, yes, you need a quarterback to compete. Uh, but you also got to make sure your defense ain't being shell-shocked either. It's happened so many times. Uh, it's like something happens to them. I don't know what it is. But for right now, uh, this is where we're at. I mean, let's go ahead and look at it right here. Uh, while playing head-to-head -head versus Steelers, uh, Russ Wilson, he has been 2-0 uh, versus uh, Mike Tomlin. Uh, 645 yards, eight touchdowns with uh, no turnovers, and a pass range of 147.1. Uh, he visited with the Steelers uh, for over six hours on the Friday, heading into that Sunday, which would have been uh, – March uh eighth. Uh and uh pretty much uh met with the other the others uh I mean along with Arthur Smith. I mean he talked about how he had like a Zoom call, which is supposed to be like about 10, 15 minutes. It turned out to be almost an hour and a half. But I mean, it just goes to show you right there. And then like you know, meeting up with the other captains, I mean, and the other leaders on this team, like uh Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Mika Fitzpatrick right there. I mean, just getting that rapport going, getting to know each other, the feeling out process right there, uh, despite knowing him from a distance, what he brings to the table still. I mean, Wilson, he will be uh, 36 at the end of November uh, this year. Now, one thing to notice, uh, too, Jerry Dulick uh, did uh, mention uh, that despite uh, signing him to a one-year contract, Wilson and Steelers intend to do a longer deal at the end of the season uh, per sources, uh, which should be very interesting right there because and the reason why I think that makes a lot of sense right there too because don't forget, uh, Kenny Pickett, who was actually just traded uh, to the Philadelphia Eagles on Friday, 
I thought for a moment when I uh, heard the news, my cousin sent me a text message. I thought it's like, don't tell me this is like an early April Fool's joke. But at the same time, too, when you look at the compensation that the Steelers um, made that trade with the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, here's the trade details uh, right there uh, back on uh, Friday, uh, March 15th. The Steelers uh, sent uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, to the Eagles, along with their fourth round, 120th overall uh, pick, and they received the Philadelphia Eagles this year's uh, third round, 98th overall, and uh, next year's uh, two seventh round uh, picks. So I really think that was pretty good. So as a result of that right now, now you got four picks in the top 100 with that move right there at number 20, 51, 84, and 98. And then you got your main picks after that, 119, 178, 195. Real good trade. But like I said, uh, just definitely, uh, I, you know what? I'm looking to start a little. And yes, I was a guy. I do got a Kenny Pickett jersey hanging in my closet still. I'm not afraid to admit. I don't care. I was excited. I was willing to invest in this guy. So I don't mind taking the big risk like that. But now you got a guy like uh, Russell Wilson, which this should happen two years ago. But, I mean, here's the funny thing, too, about this. You know, last week the theme was, I mean, having a guy like Russell Wilson on this team, I mean, a lot of people just look at it, it's like, you know what, this would happen if you would got him on the cheap where they didn't have to spend much out of pocket. Thanks in large part to the Broncos by designating him that post-June 1st release, the $39 million that they owed him, for this season. I mean, you just have to deduct from what we got from this new team, but they still got to eat $85 million of dead cap. So thank you very much, Sean Payton, Broncos ownership, and the Walmart family. So Steeler Nation, if you got a second, I'd like to hear you tag like you're a proud customer of Walmart right there. Nah, I'm just kidding. But uh, anyway, I mean... Russell Wilson, I don't care what anyone says, the guy is still a winner. I I, I like to just wait and see. I, I'm sure there's going to still be some stuff that true where he could rub off uh, the wrong way. But, I mean, his game, I'm sure it has to slow down at some point. But Russell Wilson, too, I mean, it's just, I, I you know, at the end of the day, when you guys got a guy, when you look at the Steelers organization, Look at what they are historically. I mean, for like the since the merger, all the playoff appearances they've been making, and then also too, I mean, for for the most part, I mean, when, when you look at the Steelers right now, I mean, and then those six Super Bowl championships uh, that they've won. I mean, it just you gotta like uh, find a way to be. You know, like in the playoffs, I mean, I mean, winning playoff games once again. And I'm glad Art Rooney said what he said. I'm glad he finally acknowledged it. He just could not keep doing the same song and dance every time. But like I said, uh, what ended up happening after the Kenny Pickett trade, which was inevitable, you had uh, the acquisition of Justin Fields. And that was another guy who the Steelers were interested in too. Mike Tomlin loved. Justin Fields right there. I mean, you look back like the game he had like uh, uh Monday Night Football for where he threw for over 290 yards, a touchdown on the pick. Yes, he got sacked three times, but I mean, you look at like how they almost won that game with a crazy long distance uh field goal. I mean, which just bounced off the crossbar, did not go in. I mean, he also had Ben Rossberg threw for 201 yards in that game, got sacked. Uh, four times, so one more sack than Justin Fields in that game. That Monday night game was something to behold, I mean, at the same time, too. The Steelers have definitely struggled against the Bears, I mean, more particularly at that moment in time, going uh, 0 for 3 before they finally s snapped that lose streak to the Bears, uh, I mean, which took them about 16 years to do. So Justin Fields, I mean, you basically uh, gave them the Bears uh, – the Steelers did. They gave him their six-round pick for next year's draft, 
which could potentially turn into a fourth round pick, according to Am Schefter, as long as Justin Fields plays 51% of, of his snaps and plays. Uh I'm I'm you know what? Hey, doable. I'm just gonna say this right now. I mean, when I hear some of the people who are look at Russell Wilson, he's washed, probably doesn't got much left in him. Maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I just because for them to like uh, for the Steelers, you got to May second to make that decision to pick up the fifth year option, and which, by the way, if the Steelers were to pick up Justin Fields as a fifth year option uh, to be uh, in two thousand twenty five, uh, that uh, cap hit for that year would be twenty five point six. Six four million dollars uh that they'd be having to pick up right there. They haven't make a decision on. So let's wait and see about that. But Justin Fields at the end of the day, when you look at his uh time with the Chicago Bears right there, I mean, he's been 18 games under 500, uh 10 and 28, uh 40 touchdowns and 30 picks right there. He's only completed 60% of his passes. Uh his passing yards, people insist that it's gotten better. I mean, yes, but not really. Uh, no. Not enough for me yet. I said even just like the same pick I will give for Kenny Pickett. Your third year in your rookie contract has to be the year you had the significantly strike to race any doubts uh, for Ryan Poles and the Bears that you're their guy. Now, remember, Ryan Pace was a guy that drafted him, not Poles. So, I mean, there was a lot of also wondering too, like, you know, a lot of people felt that, like any other GM, when you come to a situation where you hear a quarterback, they probably want to end up drafting their own quarterback. So they do have, like, say, playoff success, young loan championship success. They want to get the credit for having drafting their own guy or sign their own guys versus having someone else's project. But uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm not so sure how much this is going to work out. I'm probably say it fails. To be honest, with you, I'm just not a believer in Justin Fields. I do believe what they can do to get creative with him if he's willing to buy in. I mean, at this point, he's got no choice. I mean, but I, I just saw him the idea. I mean, can you use this guy, get creative with him, use him as wildcat formations, use him as a receiver every now and then, runner, uh, short yard situations. I mean, do some uh, special passing plays every now and then. I mean, I could see that working. Kind of like what they did with Cordell Stewart back in the day. Why not? I'm not so sure about him being like Lamar Jackson. There's just no chance in that. I mean, legs, okay, got me there. But as far as like the total package being a passer, not a chance. Uh, I'm I'm not really happy with this move. I'm just not happy if I want to go back down this uh, cycle again of uh, going for – recycled uh, former first-round quarterbacks, such as a guy like Paxton Lynch, uh, Dwayne Haskins. God rest his soul, by the way. I'm sorry for bringing that up. I apologize for able and watching this, but you get the picture at the end. As great of a human as he was, I mean, the struggles he had, unfortunately, in his career as a player and how he got forced out of Washington to come over here and who was going to be building some rapport with Mitch Trubisky in his uh, second year uh, try and turn things around. Uh, just sad. Continue to pray for him and his family. But no, nah, I, I don't think I want to keep going through this anymore. Even like Zach Mettenberger. Now, I'm not saying he was, uh, you know, whatever the case, draft or undraft, I forget. But we've been through this uh, pipeline before. It's just, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to keep working. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at some of the other moves the Steelers did make. They also signed uh, Patrick Queen right here, uh, formerly the Baltimore uh, Ravens, mill linebacker. Three-year deal, $41 million, uh, of which $13.84 million total guaranteed. Uh, Patrick Queen, he did have his uh, career high in uh, tackles, working alongside a guy like Roquan Smith, uh, former Chicago Bear. He had 133 total tackles, which is his most uh, ever. He also had uh, interception, fumble recovery, and uh, that was it, nine tackles for loss. So his career highlights uh, includes 200, I mean, 454 total uh, tackles, four interceptions, 
along with six fumble recoveries. So he's got 10 takeaways as a defender right there. Uh, one of them, which he's returned for a touchdown in his rookie season back in 2020. I mean, this guy right here, uh, Patrick Queen, who is a former first-round pick, 20th overall in the 2020 uh, draft right there. I uh, made his only Pro Bowl uh, last year with a uh, purple and black of the Baltimore Ravens. But I, I got to tell you, I mean, another guy, too, that they also – uh, got in right here too. They've also uh, dealt Deontay Johnson last week uh, to the Carolina Panthers. They sent the Steelers sent their seventh round, two hundred fortieth overall pick to the Panthers for cornerback uh, Dante Jackson, and they'll also be getting the Panthers this year's uh, sixth round pick, hundred seventy eighth overall uh, from them. Now uh, Deontay Johnson was entering the final year of his two year uh, contract, came with a fifty million dollar cap hit. With Johnson to Carolina, George Pickens is the team's clear number one receiver, but they'll need to add position to draft free agency. Uh, Deontay, he leaves behind $9.7 million a dead cap to the Panthers, bringing up one year, $10.6 million uh, contract to Pittsburgh, which $4 million was due this past uh, Friday. Now you look at it right there. Uh, Jeremy Fowler last week said that the Panthers were playing the trade release Jackson, who had 14 career receptions including four in his rookie season, but none last season. Moving on for Jackson leaves Carolina looking for a starting quarterback to play opposite uh, J.C. Horn. However, Johnson gives quarterback Bryce Jackson number one pick in the 2023 draft, an additional playmaker as the Panthers look to climb from an NFL Wars 2-15 record last season. Johnson had five uh, touchdown receptions uh, last year, uh, 717 receiving yards and 51 catches. After not scoring a single touchdown all in 2022, he earned the Pro Bowl nod in 2021 with his lone 1,000 yard season, the career high, eight touchdown receptions, and quarterback Ben Rosberger's final year. Five seasons with the Steelers, Johnson racked up 4,363 receiving yards of 391 catches, 25 touchdowns. Now, while he was criticized for his apparent lack of effort on the play against the Browns, we didn't go for a loose bar. Drew Iyer from the fans for a drop late in season 2020. He earned frequent praise from teammates and coaches for his route running ability to get open, which has been highly uh, noted and respected by pro football focus. Now, the, the team does have a knee at safety, but even more pressing with the lease of versatile defense back Keanu Neal. Steelers also do add veteran wide receiver Van Jefferson to a one-year deal, former Super Bowl champion of the L.A. Rams. And you look at the other uh, moves right here, the Steelers been been uh, doing busy right here, free HC. I mean, for the most part, I mean, uh, uh, Deshaun Elliott, a uh, strong safety, two-year uh, $6 million contract with the Steelers. Then, of course, uh, yeah. So, I mean, right now, if you were to tell me what to give this uh, offseason, I had to say give it an A minus right now. I mean, more particularly, Patrick Queen right there. I mean, who's probably like the best according to Jerry Dulac outside of the quarterback, uh, this right here. Rich Eisen said this is a guy who could play uh, side on the size and, and be like uh, versatile uh, in this uh, defense right here and just find a way to be uh, smack dab in the middle, right place, right time. I uh, can't wait to see how he's going to be able to translate. But just to finish up real quick on uh, Kenny Pickett, at the end of the day, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, look at the explanation by, say, like a D.D. Kinkawala on X, formerly known as on Twitter. Uh, he, he said, like, she said this is defensive Kenny. Let's pretend you're not fully healthy and not fully clear to play. Let's say your team has a star and a backup that week. But you could be the emergency third quarterback if you get shot up. Trades doctors say not worth it. You're the bad guy for not overruling the doctors. Fair point. Okay. At that moment in time, maybe. Okay. It still did not look good at that moment in time. But I mean, just, you know, the main sticking point, according to Dulek, was this poor handling of welcoming the transition of Russell Wilson onto the team. Now, Kenny Pickett was told by Mike Tomlin and the organization that Wilson wasn't beginning most of the first-round reps, that Kenny Pickett would be competing 
for the starting job, even despite, you know, like after the season and then the right to the Super Bowl, that they were willing to go behind uh, Kenny Pickett, have him turn, try and like uh, give him another year, give him a chance to see if he could develop into a starter. But he, at the end of the day, he basically quit his way out of Pittsburgh, if you think about it. And I hate saying that. But, I mean, it's the truth. I mean, and the part that makes it really look worse to Russell Wilson texted them just saying, let's be better versions of ourselves. Let's get after this. Uh, Kenny Pickett right now, I think, I mean, I, I don't blame him for feeling like, you know, his character has been a little bit flawed. I mean, especially not dressing. But aside from that, I mean, just I mean, he did not sound like a supporting teammate in the end, too. When you had to go for the transition, I get it. I mean, with it, I mean, when you, when you have someone that's invested in you, there'll be a lot of emotions, maybe some ego. I mean, not bad ego, but I mean, just as far as like what happened and going to a place like Philadelphia to back up Jalen Hurts right now. I mean, good luck with that fan base. I mean, he grew up in New Jersey, an Eagles fan. Uh, I'm sure he's more than ready for it. What? But right now, definitely sad to say that he didn't uh, make the most of his effort, his times here. But that's going to do it. Uh, so let me know what you think. This free agency period, I had to say give it an A-. Definitely uh, for sure. Any things I missed right here, I mean... Yeah, so remember, once again, the Justin Fields trade, that six-round pick for next year, the 2025 six-round pick that the Steelers sent the Bears, that could become a fourth-round pick as long as he plays 51% of the plays, Justin Fields it is. So that's going to do it right here. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, feel free to drop me a comment on my YouTube channel, Mass Steel Podcast. You can also hit me up on Twitter X, at Mass Steel CGR, and on Instagram, at Mass Steel Nation. I tell you what, right now, Omar Khan, right now, along with Art Rooney, they're definitely sh slowing, slowly changing, doing things to steer away. And it's about time, to be honest with you. I mean, no more one dones in the playoffs. I mean, clearly, something's got to give. I mean, more than just the 17 seasons of non losing football, which Jerry Dulac highlighted, which we're all aware of. But I mean, or I mean, where it's nine and eight seasons, 10 and seven like they did this year, just getting to the playoffs, it's just not enough. They need to be making a run in the playoffs. And realistically right now, I mean, when you look at the contracts, what they especially got in that defensive star talent, I mean, with guys like Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Big for Fitzpatrick more in particular, that's pretty much like a three-year window, if you ask me, for them to, like, strike three years. I would predict they're going to extend Hayward for cap purposes, which I would anticipate. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, yeah, they got to do something right now before this window closes. Uh, let me know what you think. And as I always, leave you. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Hang on. Thank you for watching the Mass Steel Podcast with your host, Charles Prodge Ritchie, here on YouTube. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for all the latest Mass Steel Podcast episodes, feel free to download them on Mixcloud. Anchor.fm and SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts.